This is a presentation of One Login Training. Welcome to Configuring the Office 365 V2 App Connector Part 2. So, the pre-checklist contains a few questions we want to think about before you start actually configuring your connection to Office 365. So, first question. Does your Office 365 account even allow for single sign-on configuration? Meaning, can you federate your Azure AD domains? Not all Office 365 plans allow for this. So check there first. Then, does your Office 365 implementation already use ADFS or another identity provider for federation? Remember, we just took a look at some of the possible configurations you might have already in place and where one login will replace some of those components. So you must defederate any domain that you might already have federated. So if you already have ADFS in place for Office 365, that means that domain is federated and you're going to want to defederate this. This is done typically through PowerShell, by the way. Next, is your organization's domain even registered with Office 365? So you do actually need like a custom domain to be registered with Office 365. You can't use the default on Microsoft.com uh, domain that you get when you set it up. It has to be like, you know, your company name.com that's been registered with your Office 365 account. And again, then, is that domain, the one that you want to federate with, is it set to be your primary domain? Is it the default domain in Office 365? Okay, problem is there, you can't federate with the primary domain you have to switch that default or primary domain to be that on Microsoft.com domain that got set up when you first configured your Office 365 instance. And a few more. So how about admin access? You are going to need global administrative access in order to do some of these configuration steps. And that administrator account has to be outside of whatever domain we are federating with. So your global administrator account needs to be really probably an on Microsoft account. That's the easiest thing to do is set up for it. So like its username will be my favorite admin at whatever domain dot on Microsoft.com and testing, okay? So this is a big deal. You are switching how your users are going to be logging into Office 365, which is probably one of the main applications they use every single day. So testing is really important. So maybe having a separate domain that you've registered with Office 365, it's a good idea. You don't need a whole separate account, just another domain that you can federate within your Office 365 account, create a few users in that domain, kind of test out the entire process. And that question about that Azure AD Connect guy. Remember again, we looked at several possible configuration options and some people like to keep Azure AD Connect around in order to handle the majority of the provisioning. So for that particular configuration, you are going to need, as we've already discussed, we're just trying to remind you here, you're going to need that Office 365 V2 licenses only app connector instead of the main Office 365 V2 connector. All right, let's get down to the how to's. First, we need to add the app connector itself. 
So once you have answered all the previous questions and ensure that you can enable Office 365 for single sign-on and you know which of your domains you want to federate, you can add in our app connector. Most importantly, make sure you add the app connector called Office 365 V2. The V2 is crucial. Do not choose the one that just says Office 365. And as far as you know, what options you might want to set here, you might want to change the display name since it has V2 in it by default. So maybe you don't want that there. And we recommend that while you are configuring this, you make it invisible in the portal. Therefore, toggle visible in portal there to disable that. So it's not going to be seen by your users until you choose for them to see it, i.e. change visible in portal there to enabled. So change the display name, disable the visible in portal option and click save. So let's take a look at this in real life. All right, so we're gonna start here in the one login admin UI. We'll go to applications and from the main applications page, click on add app. Now at this point, I would type in Office 365 into the search box immediately starts filtering for all the applications that have Office 365 in their name. And there are really quite a few. Most all of them are used to connect to very specific parts of Office 365. Thus, you might have particular use cases where you want users to just log in and access Excel, for example. But for majority of the configurations, people want their users just to get into Office 365. So the connector that I want is down here. Got to scroll down a little to find it. And it's that Office 365 V2 connector that I have mentioned quite a few times. So I'm going to select it. Now, again, its name starts off as Office 365 V2. My users probably do not care about the V2 portion. So I'm just going to change that to Office 365. And because we are doing initial configuration stuff and we don't want our users to be able to see this until we're ready, we're gonna disable visible in portal. And now I can click save. This concludes part two of configuring the Office 365 V2 app connector. Please continue on to part three so you can learn how to configure provisioning. This is a presentation of One Login Training.